it and I fold. At this farmhouse located just outside Uruguay's capital, Montevideo, a 78-year-old man goes about his day in his small farm with his loyal companion, this three-legged dog, constantly by his side. A simple life by all standards, only that this is no simple man. Meet Jose Mujica, the president of the South American nation, Uruguay. What's amazing with this president is the life he lives. This, for example, is his immediate bodyguard, Manuela. This sky-blue 1987 Volkswagen Beetle, his lone motorcade, and this tiny farmhouse off a dusty rural road, his own state house mansion. What would be gibberish back home in Kenya, where the president's huge motorcade stops traffic, he has numerous bodyguards, and his mansion is the stuff royalty is made of. Luxury here in Kenya is a compulsory component and part of the presidential package. Not so for President Jose Mujica, whose mansion is a compact, dimly lit house, what has seen him nicknamed by the media as the world's poorest president. But is he poor? No, I am not a poor president. Poor people are those who always want more and more, those who never have enough of anything. Those are the poor because they are in a never-ending cycle and they won't ever have enough time in their lives. President Mujica, who is simply referred to by most of his citizens as Pepe, has shunned the luxurious house provided by the state for its leaders and opted to stay at this farmhouse with his wife, herself a senator. He also is said to give away 90% of his salary every month to charity, choosing to make ends meet by firming here with his wife when he is not running the nation. I choose this austere lifestyle. I choose not to have too many belongings so I have time to live how I want to live. In his latest official declaration of wealth, President Mujica was recorded as owning just two vehicles, his VW Beetle and this tractor, a small amount of property and his farmhouse. For a man whose earlier life wasn't as noble, having been a member of the leftist Uruguayan guerrilla movement in the 60s and 70s, what saw him spend 14 years in prison, 11 of which were in isolation, and what left him with six bullet wounds that are a constant reminder of his radical days. Whether such a sacrifice would be made by any leaders in Kenya, let alone the president, is as clear as the cliché night and day, with the backdrop of parliament sessions consumed with salary increase discussions and parks after retirement. Should they learn a thing or two from the president of the small South American nation, or is it truly too much to ask? Evelyn Wamboy, Citizen Live at Nine.